my destiny That my name is victory He said that I've overcome I know I've already won He wrote in my destiny That my name is victory I know who I am God wrote in his plan for me Oh, my name is victory Oh, my name is victory Amen, amen. You stand to your feet all over the building, amen. always a good thing that you can make one phone call and they answer the phone say whatever you need I got it y'all missed all of that I picked up the phone made one phone call she said pastor I got it so tonight, we have our own, amen, our own. Come on, put your hands together for our own. Pastor Ramona Moore is going to come and give us a word on tonight, amen. Bless you. Come on and give God some praise in this house. Come on. Now, I didn't say me, I said give God some praise. In the house, this is Thanksgiving. Do you have any Thanksgiving? Is there one thing that you can thank God for right now? Can you just for about 10 seconds just lose it? Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy, his mercy. If you don't have enough in your refrigerator, his mercy. Hallelujah. If all you got is a dime in your pocket, his mercy. Hallelujah. If all you got left is a clap in your hand, that's still because of his mercy. And his mercy endures forever. Aren't you glad for grace and mercy tonight? We honor the Lord. We honor, amen, the presence of the Lord in this house. I think we got the greatest house in the world. I go places and I said, I wish I could click my heels like Dorothy just for a few seconds. But we honor the Lord tonight. We honor this fine pastor and bishop of our organization. Amen. The Temple of Praise International Fellowship of Churches and the person of none other than Bishop Dr. He's got so many behind him. Glenn A. Staples, we thank God. We also thank God for this young man that is with him, and we honor him, and we bless him in the name of the Lord. You know, you can bless people with your mouth, and so we bless him. We thank God for Pastor Lamar. Amen. Thank God for all of you, God's people. Amen. We're so glad to see Bishop Holloway with us on tonight. Amen. We want to give honor where honor is due. Amen. To every minister and every wannabe minister, God bless your hearts. And everyone that think they're aspiring and they feel that God has called you, yeah, but you need to listen a little loud longer. We want to greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. I thought tonight, and as I was uh, sitting and uh, we were talking earlier about how God will change you, I want to go to very quickly, and I'm going to try to get you all out of here because I'm one of them kind of preachers. Is that all right? I can be a little long, but tonight we're just going to try to hit it and let you go home. But there is a word from the Lord. Out of Leviticus, the seventh chapter, and we're going to begin uh, reading Amen. At the 11th verse and the 12th verses. Amen. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. 
if he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Beside the cakes he shall offer for this offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. You may be seated. I want to leave a thought with you tonight, the real thanksgiving. The real thanksgiving. And as I was sitting there and I was thinking very quickly um, of how our interpretation of thanksgiving at the first mention of the word, we automatically see a turkey. It is amazing, but that is what forms in our minds and we think of the cornucopia of food that will be laid out on tables tomorrow. I watched a man pay $30 for chitlins. I don't know why on yesterday. I might be black and from the country, but I never did chitlins. But moving right along and we will go to expense to load our tables a man with food, a man. And I'm going away in the morning, and we're going to have food from one end of that kitchen to the other because that's just what we do. And so we have this picture in our mind of the gathering of families and food and fun. But God began to deal with me. He says, I want you to go to the Word of God. And I was curious as to when this word Thanksgiving first showed up. It is called the law of the first mention for those of you. We're going to do a little bit of Bible class and learn you a little something. And, but I'm sure you've heard our bishop say it so many times. And it is a principle that requires you, amen, to understand a portion of scriptures where doctrines or certain words are mentioned for the first time in the word of God. Most of times these words or phrases or doctrines are something that set up a premise or set up a platform for things to come. And if you'll trace them, they will go all the way through the Bible. And when we begin to look into the word of God, I begin to read, amen, in Leviticus, which was the teaching of the Levites, which was where God was beginning to set in order the time of the tabernacle. And he was teaching them how he wanted things done and how they had to present themselves. And they couldn't come to church raggedy and just any kind of old way. In this particular book, we even find where those that were called and chosen got beside themselves and got caught up in their own glory. The sons of Aaron got burned up because they came to church drunk. Y'all don't hear me. It did not mean that they could not drink a little wine, but it's just like with everything, you can't do it at certain times because there is a requirement from God that we must be holy as he is holy. Holiness is something that we don't teach too much now because we have now gone into an era in the church of where we found out that some things are not going to send us to hell, Bishop Halloway. However, by the same token, some people do not know how to balance it, and they're going to extremes. Can we say amen? Amen. Uh, and so what has happened, we as the church now have to go back and bring a balance, amen, to the world because we ourselves, some have gone to the left and we've forgotten about the right. Tell your neighbor, there is right. <laughs> And when we begin to look into the word of God, we find that these men lost their lives needlessly getting caught up in their own honor. 
Tell your neighbor, just stay where God puts you. All they had to do was stand at the door. Oh, y'all don't hear me. All they had to do was just stand there and look like priests and hold holy things. But it's amazing how a man sometimes a little bit of a title or an obligation will send some to another place. Y'all don't hear me. And they get caught up in their own glory. And they are sitting there not waiting on God. Tell your neighbor, you got to wait on God. Ah, I don't care how many people have prophesied over you and told you where you're going and what you're doing. Not only is there a, oh, y'all don't hear me, a process, but there is a timing, amen, to what God wants to do in your life. It is not taking away from the prophecy. It is not taking away from the word over your life. But you got to understand that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Can we say amen? And when we begin to look in the word of God, we find that they lose their lives needlessly because they've gotten caught up in their own vain glory. When you start thinking that a position, oh, y'all don't hear me, is greater than the God that gave it to you, you're in trouble. When you start making yourself a man, hallelujah, a little God, not a big one, but a little God. And when you start thinking that you've got all authority, uh, forgetting that if it had not been for a God that was on your side, you still might be walking out on the street. Y'all don't hear me. Shooting and popping them. Y'all don't hear me in here. But because God saw something in you that nobody else saw, he decided to pull you up out of the gutter and place you in his presence. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And look beyond every fault that you had and saw a need in you because he believed in you. But you forgot about believing in God because now you got a title. Don't let your title take you to hell, baby, because at the end of the day, hallelujah, it isn't a title that's going to save you. It isn't a title that's going to keep you, but it's the giver of the title that allowed you to occupy this place. Can somebody say amen? When you understand that really your biggest job in the house of God is really just to show up and give him glory. Oh, y'all don't hear me tell your neighbor, that's real thanksgiving. You understand, hallelujah, that your position is to be committed. If you understand, amen, that there is a demand on you to live holy, then you might reconsider a position. Y'all don't hear me in here. And so the word says they offered up strange fire. Y'all don't hear me in here. And when we begin to look in the church today, we got a lot of strange fire. People that got their own interpretations. Uh, Y'all don't hear me in here. People that are dancing and don't know why they're dancing. Uh, and they're offering up strange fire. And so when we begin to look in Leviticus, uh, God is setting a blueprint. Uh, and he is telling, amen, the Levites, uh, which are the chosen ones, uh, which means, amen, uh, to be joined. My question tonight, brothers and sisters, is what are you joined to? And so when we begin to look at them, he needs to let them know that you're the chosen. You were picked out of the chosen. You are the elite. You are the royal priesthood. You are the holy nation. Everybody can't handle my anointing. Ask somebody beside you, do you really know what you got? Do you really know how to handle it? Do you really know who you are in God? You don't need a man to affirm you, but if you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need a pulpit to get somebody saved, but if you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need minister to minister to somebody, but if you got the Holy Ghost, I need you to ask three people, uh, do you have the Holy Ghost? Uh, 
And so when you look into the word of God, uh, pray with me and I'll be done here in a little while, uh, you'll find out that God is setting a blueprint. Uh, he's letting them know you got to be holy. Uh, can we say amen? Because you're joined to me. Uh, you are my spokesman. Uh, you are the example of who and what I am. Uh, and I just can't take anything. Can we say amen? And so when we look into the word of God, we will find amen that the first several chapters of Levi deals with the book of laws and it deals with worship. Y'all don't hear me because sacrificing was a type of worship. Ask your neighbor, did you worship tonight? Oh, somebody can praise him, but can you worship him? Because worship takes a relationship. Worship means intimacy. Worship means he knows things about you that nobody else knows. Lord, have mercy. Worship means that you'll say things to him that you wouldn't normally say to anybody else. It's like you and your lover. Can I say that? I said it. Hallelujah. He knows things about you. He knows how to hold you. He knows how to caress you. Oh, loose me in here. You can't tell everybody everything about you and your lover. And so when you look at worship, even though everybody is around you. It is an intimate thing. Say amen. It is an intimate thing. Say amen. Sacrifice. It is called the peace offering, but another name of it, y'all don't hear me, is an offering of thanksgiving. It means that when you thanksgiving it was always and also known as the fellowship and the peace offering what are you saying I'm saying that when you give with thanksgiving it brings a peace a peace in your life when you begin we used to do it with testimony giving honor to God giving honor to my pastor giving honor to the mothers and the deacons. It was a thanksgiving. It was a word of where you were giving thanks for God for keeping you and waking you up. Somebody ought to throw those blessed hands in the air and tell your God thank you. Just give him one thank you. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus I say thank you. When I see him as a way maker, I've got to say thank you. I'm, oh, y'all don't hear me. Every praise that I give him, it is intentional. Because when he blesses me, it is still intentional. See, yes, somebody, I don't need you to praise him. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Put those hands together. 
I'm almost done. You pray for me, I'll be done. And so you've got to understand that when you gave the praise or, or gave the offering or the sacrifice, you could not come to God just any kind of way. Tell your neighbor, you got to be holy. You have to be clean. I just came back from Israel, been there once before. And every tabernacle had what was known as mikvahs. Mikvahs were when they went to offer up their sacrifice uh, brother Cornell uh, uh, they would uh, uh, they would wash and baptize themselves uh, pastor they didn't lean back and baptize uh, cause they wasn't going back to anything uh, but they leaned forward and dipped themselves in the pool uh, showing that they were moving forward in God uh, y'all don't like me in here uh, tell your neighbor I gotta go forward tonight uh, that's what my thanksgiving is about uh, that's what my offering is about uh, and they would clean themselves up uh, because by the time they carried uh, the animal up there uh, they had to be clean uh, because they believed that if you came dirty uh, you defiled everything around you uh, that's why I would be particular uh, about where I sit and who I sit beside and where I go and who I let hang around me because sometimes there is an anointing on your life and you can't let the devil come in and taint what God has made clean in your life I didn't say you were better but tell your neighbor I'm better off that's why sometimes I got to hang by myself. That's what sometimes I got to be alone. which showed that when the people came up uh, to the mountain top uh, they came with being holy uh, they didn't care who saw them uh, but they went down in the water uh, ask your neighbor uh, have you been down in the water uh, have you been baptized uh, they would have to baptize themselves uh, before they could even offer a sacrifice uh, what are you saying you just can't come to church any kind of way. I'm not talking about your pants. I'm not talking about your skivvies. I could care less about your boots. But there is something about your spirit that when you show up, you got to be right if you need God to accept your praise. You can't come Uh, we find uh, that's why uh, that God got upset uh, in Malachi. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, he began to say to them, uh, will a man rob God? Uh, he was not talking to regular parishioners. Uh, he was talking to the Levites. Uh, he was talking to those that were, y'all don't hear me, uh, in leadership. 
because they were bringing Pastor Lamar dirty sacrifices. They were bringing lambs that might have had an eye out. And they were bringing sheep that might have had an infestation. He said, you're just bringing up anything and you're robbing me. But anytime you just throw anything at God, you're just robbing yourself. Y'all don't hear me. Huh? He said, would a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me huh, of your tithe and your offering. Sometimes the tithe, huh, well, really the first fruits. Huh, can I go there for a minute? Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? And you just want to give God anything. Huh? No, baby. Huh? You've got to give him the right thing huh? at the right time. Huh? You just can't throw some thing. Oh Lord have mercy. Well I'll just give this because I need this for that. No, 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 no. Because the Thanksgiving offering I read they said was a voluntary one that was giving with your own free will. Y'all don't hear me. In other words I don't need pastor giving $50 because y'all for me. Because if the word hits me I'm going to pull a dollar or something out of my pocket uh, and go lay it on the altar for myself. Uh, y'all don't hear me in here. Uh, tell your neighbor my praise, uh, neither my sacrifice uh, depends on what you do uh, because I got to stand before him for myself. Uh, and so tell your neighbor free will, free will. Oh God, it was spontaneous. I've got to hurry up. And so when you would give the Thanksgiving or the peace offering, ah, oh, look at what happens now. The priest will bless it, but he only keeps a portion of it. And you get the rest of it to eat. However, there was a stipulation. The stipulation was you had three days to eat it. If it was not consumed in three days, by the fourth day, it would begin to rot. Loose me in here. That's why Jesus could not lay in the ground until he rotted. Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. He was a sacrifice that had to be consumed by the believer. And he could not have bones broken. Neither could he have rotten flesh. Loose me in here. He was who he was. And so we look, y'all sit down into the word of God and we find a man. God said this to me. I read something. He said, Thanksgiving requires thanks living. I said, oh God, really? He said, you need thanks living to go along with thanksgiving. In other words, you can't give give thanks and not live, oh y'all don't hear me, 10 cents worth of dog food, not gonna work, you can't shuck and dive and lean and hide, it's not gonna work, oh, what kind of thanksgiving, and I'm going to my points, number one you've got to give the sacrifice of you your person, put your person, out of Romans 12 and 1, the writer says, I beseech you Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It shouldn't be hard to live for God. It's a choice. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And the second verse says, be not conformed to the this world, but be ye transformed. Y'all don't hear me. That's why I like the transformers. I like Optimus Prime. Because Prime would look like an ordinary truck. But when trouble came around, he was able to transform himself y'all don't hear me into something because he didn't look like what he really was no. tell your neighbor I don't look like what I really am I am a royal priesthood I am of a holy nation y'all have to excuse me I get 
excited. But tell your neighbor, I'm a transformer. Ah, when the devil comes out against me like a flood, then the Lord will lift up a standard in me. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I know how to rebuke. Yes, I do. I know how to pray. Tell your neighbor, I'm a transformer. Lord, have mercy. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word renew means ever so often you got to redo your mind. Bishop Jake said something. I don't know if you read it. This week on his tweet, he said this. When you change your mind, you can change your life. Tell your neighbor, start changing your mind. You getting up in the prayer line and you wearing Bishop out. Bishop, I need you to pray for me because I'm not able to do. No, 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 baby. Just change your mind. Y'all don't hear me. It's just that simple. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus somebody say yes Lord and so uh, when I found out uh, about the sacrifice when they sacrificed the animal uh, they would put the animal it was part of the transformation Uh, they would put the animal between two hooks that were called flesh hooks because when the animal uh, was laid upon the altar y'all don't hear me in here (laughs) Uh, because it had just been killed its body was still slick and slimy but if it had hooks in it it wouldn't fall off the altar tell your neighbor hook up with God so you don't fall off the altar y'all don't hear me here because when the fire would start leaping it did something to the meat and the meat would be squirming just like it was alive but it had to stay there because there was smoke that went up that signified and represented the prayers number two in my notes you've got to have a sacrifice of prayer. Psalms 141 and 2 the writer says this, let my prayer be set before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The word of God says that when you sacrifice and when you pray because we're getting ready to go on a fast uh, that your fasting and your prayer uh, will go up as a sweet smelling savor uh, until the nostrils of God uh, God wants to see your prayer uh, he wants to smell the endurance of your prayer uh, he wants to smell the commitment of your prayer uh, look at somebody and say pray uh, Number three, as a sacrifice, and I'm about done, tell your neighbor you've got to give him the sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Continually on and on and on in the good times and in the bad times, I will bless the Lord. Tell your neighbor all the time when I'm broke. Oh, y'all don't hear me when I'm sick. If I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. He said, Continually be in my mouth. So there's got to be a sacrifice of praise that's a part of the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I know some of you are tired. And I heard the second verse said, my soul, my soul, my soul shall make her 
shall boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together, my brothers and my sisters. That is the conclusion of the sermon. But I wonder right now, do you have a sacrifice of prayer? Do you have anything to thank God for? Can you look in your mind and not even go back 10 years? Can you search yourself and remember when you woke up this morning, clothed in your right mind, had the activities of your limbs. It was in him you lived and moved and had your being. I wonder, is there anybody that's got a two-second praise, a three-second praise, a four-second praise, a five-second praise, a six-second praise, a seven Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's not long. But do you have a clap in your hand? Do you have a holler in your voice? Somebody say yes. Thanksgiving. The real Thanksgiving is what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord, the real thanksgiving. Everybody just lifting up your hand, just giving thanks, just giving thanks, giving thanks, hallelujah. Just giving thanks. Right now, as we're here, if there's one tonight that doesn't know the Lord, as we are giving thanks for deacons or ministers that are here, check with your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? If you don't know him, we invite you to know him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's no one you want to be without in your life. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ. Lord, oh, oh, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Lift your hands and give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, our Lord and Rich for an all the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am. I'm rich. That's what I'm saying. Because of what the Lord has done. For us, come on, let's put that land. Give thanks. Oh, 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 give thanks. Is there somebody else? Give thanks. Come on, somebody, give thanks. This could be you. Give thanks. 
Is there another? Give thanks, give thanks. Put your hands together and give thanks. Give thanks. Now just lift your hands and just begin to worship God. At this time, I'm going to turn this portion of the service over into the hands of Pastor Lamar. Can we say amen? Oh, come on. Let's worship God in this house. Put your hands together and bless him. Come on. The real Thanksgiving. Amen. Take these young ladies back, please, and get some information from them and pray with them and pray for them. Amen. Come on, Temple of Praise. Let's show our love. Amen. Come on. We can do better than that. Thank you. Amen. I want to do something very quickly, and then we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I want to be a blessing to Pastor Moron tonight. Oh, come on. I want to be a blessing to Pastor Moron tonight for delaying her trip just to share with us the real Thanksgiving. Amen. She was supposed to have been on the road. She was supposed to have been gone already, but she said, Pastor, I got you back. I'll be right there with you. So she delayed her trip, and I want to be a bless- blessing unto her. Can y'all help me today? If everybody in the building gets something in your hand quickly, get something in your hand quickly. I'm going to ask all the leaders in the building to meet me with a a $20 offering just to be a blessing to her. Amen. Thank you so much. When you get it, come on, bring it. When you get it, bring it. Just rush the altar. Come on, all over the building. real thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you so much. Everybody grab somebody. Everybody touch somebody all over the building. Everybody touch somebody as we get ready to dismiss from this place. Father, I thank you for the hand that I am holding the one that's on my left and the one that's on my right. Now, Master, bless them like never before, Lord God. Master, we bind any confusion in the life and in the family of the hand that I am holding. Allow this holiday to be the sweetest holiday we've ever had. God, I thank you. Now, bless us as we leave this place with never your presence. Bring us back again in the morning. In Jesus' name, loose those hands and give God a praise for your neighbor. Before you get out of here, hug at least three people. Tell them happy Thanksgiving. See you in the morning. God bless you. 10 o'clock service. I'll see you in the morning.